Okay, so if you've been following along the whole series and you've been revising this whole thing with me and you've made it this far, we're almost at the end now. So we've covered Ohm's Law, Combining Resistors, Basic Circuit Laws, KVL, KCL, Nodal, Mesh, Superposition, and then we're on to Feminins and Nortons. And these two are fairly, they're pretty much exactly the same, basically. They're two guys, I believe, who worked with each other or maybe, I don't know, I think Feminin came first and then Norton came after and was like, oh yeah, look, you can just do this. So Okay, so first let's start off with the definition. So any electrical network that contains voltage sources and current or current sources and resistors. So any network that has these, you can replace it at its terminals A and B. What that basically means is that if you have a circuit here, imagine imagine you've got a black box here. Inside that black box is a whole bunch of circuits. It's, it's voltages, current sources, resistors, right? And then you just had a little connector here and connect to here you call this a call this b what we're saying is that we can take a whole circuit that goes on whatever's going on inside here we can take what's inside here and basically in terms of a and b we can replace it with its feminine equivalent which is basically giving it a voltage feminine and a resistor feminine so we can take any electrical network that contains voltage sources current sources and resistances and it can be replaced at the terminals A and B by an equivalent combination of a voltage source V feminine, which is in series with a resistance R feminine. Okay, so this is that's what that looks like. This is basically what we're going to be doing. We're going to be taking a com a more complicated circuit and simplifying it down to this. When it comes to getting this V feminine, this voltage, right? It's going to be the open circuit voltage at these two terminals. Right, or these two terminals. That's how we're going to work out the voltage. It's going to be the open circuit voltage at these two terminals. Okay, so let's let me give you an example of a circuit that we'd simplify. Right, so this circuit here, we can simplify this circuit and turn it into a load R feminine, V feminine, and you can do this for any circuit that has voltage sources, current sources, and resistors. Cool. Okay. This is what we're going to be doing. Let's just briefly go over what the steps are. So, can you take a guess at how many steps there are to solve um, Feminins? And if you've watched my other videos on nodal, mesh, and superposition, you should know how many steps there are. These are made up basically, they're not made up by me, and obviously, like when I learned, you know, these are the steps that you take, but I've kind of condensed them into what I always just remember as the six steps. Okay, so firstly, we need to remove the load. Secondly, we need to set all sources to zero. Thirdly, we need to find total resistance. Next, we need to find voltage feminine, and we do that using the best technique. That, that, that will make sense in a bit when we do an example in the best technique um another point actually let me just write this in small over here so remember we'll put it in brackets and at this point here we need to reset the circuit with no load whenever i do these kind of brackets it's because it's not really an official step but it's something that i've forgot to do myself personally and it's bit me in the butt so i want to make sure you don't forget uh number five is to draw the feminine circuit and then number six you don't always have to do this but we'll do this in our example but we find the voltage voltage across the load the load is this resistor here oh okay so probably a key point that we need that we need to keep in mind before we start um let's write it over here. So a key point to remember is that we replace the load with an open circuit. Basically breaking the circuit. That's an important point to remember, but 
Again, we'll come to that when we do the example, but I just want to keep I just want you to keep that in mind. Okay. So let's do an example now. Um I think what we'll do is we'll take let's take this circuit that we drew up here. Just give it all some values. So we're gonna convert this circuit here into that circuit. Okay. Let's give some values. We go uh, four ohms, uh, six ohms, and six ohms of oh, voltage as well. Uh, six volts. Okay. Now we've got got our circuit. So let's start off with step one, which is to remove the load. Copy and paste this. Okay, so how do we remove the load? As I mentioned here, we replace the load with an open circuit. What's an open circuit? You literally just take your rubber and rub it out. And there you go. You've now removed the load. Step one. Nice and easy, right? <laughs> okay, so step two. We need to set all sources to zero. All sources to zero. And then probably the important point to remember here, right over here, is that so let's put remember you have to remember that voltage is set to zero by doing what shorting it right and current sources set to zero by doing what even making a circuit an open circuit so how what we're we going to do with this voltage source we're going to set it to zero by doing what hopefully you said the right thing we're going to give it a short circuit we remove the voltage source, give it a nice short circuit. And that's it. So if we had more sources, we'd do that, but we've only got one source in this instance. So maybe so we've set all the sources to zero. Next step is to find total resistance. And you really should you really should memorize these steps. I mean, these are my own steps, but you can make your own however you want. I think these are okay. Try and memorize these and make sure that you're I, when I'm going through these steps, I'm just thinking, okay, what's next? What's next? What's next? Uh, so find total resistance. So, so when we're looking at this circuit here, you should be comfortable with seeing those two resistors, R1 and R2. And you should just be like, yeah, of course, R1 is in parallel with R2. There's no way that they're in series. And probably the key thing to remember when you're looking at, when you're finding total resistance, which is a mistake that I made as well, is that, you're looking at it from the angle of A and B. You're not looking at it from the angle of this voltage source. So, for example, if there was a voltage source there, you might say, "Oh, Hamid, look, the the current's coming this way, and then it's going this way, and it's coming back round. Then there's no current going to there because that's an open circuit. So, these two resistors are clearly in series. You'd be wrong. Don't do that. You're looking at it from the angle of A and B. Okay. So these two are in parallel. So we know by now already four times six over Four plus six. Um, I don't want to elaborate any more than that. But I'm going to, and this is going to be the last time. I promise. When you're doing two resistors in parallel, you should be comfortable by now. Product over sum. You should know that. Please, if you don't memorize that. Okay, so that gives us twenty-four over ten, which is equal to two point four, right? So we know that the total resistance here is two point four. Um, ohms, so that basically tells us that R feminine is equal to 2.4 ohms, and that's the first major part of doing feminine's theorem. That's cool. Okay, let's move on to number four. Next, we need to find voltage feminine. Voltage feminine, let's take okay, so we need to get back the original circuit, and this is the point that I made as well, actually, on the steps here. If you look at point four here, I wrote reset the circuit with no load. This is very, very important actually. Uh, this messed me up as well in my exam. So you want to, for example, if we're going to find voltage seven and you don't want to be doing it with this circuit here, that'd be crazy. You want to go back and find the voltage seven from here, from this circuit. So all we need to do is take the, take the, take the original circuit and remove the load. Right, so we've got the whole circuit there. And then when it comes to doing voltage feminine, what we're basically doing is 
if you look, we're taking, we're getting a voltmeter, and we're saying, okay, what's the resistance, or what's the, sorry, voltage here? Here. Right? So we're looking for that voltage. Now, obviously, no current is flowing here, right? No current is going to flow here. Why? Because you're going to have the current, let's do, do it. Coming this way, this way, this way, this way, and back into the battery. There's no current flowing in A and B. So what we could say is that the actual voltage is uh, is going to be the same here, right? A, the A and B's voltage is the same here as it is there and there, right? So. If we're saying now that the voltage V feminine is this point, this point, and this point, then hopefully now you can see that this is a voltage divider. Now, there are other ways that we could do this, but as I mentioned as well in the steps here, we're finding V feminine using the best technique possible. And so this, this circuit's super easy because it's basically just a voltage divider. If you can't see that, um, let me redraw it. I'll redraw it for you and hopefully it makes sense. So let's, so we've got this circuit, right? If I redraw this here, put a voltage here, right? And then I say, uh, let's do R1. So this is the standard. If you Google voltage divide, this would be the standard circuit. Phone's going off for Google. You know, should we, let's, let's quickly Google it. Go on. Um, there you go. That's the standard voltage divider circuit that you see, and that's exactly what we've got. So if you look here, you've got two resistors in series now, in terms of voltage, going this way, right, this way, this way, and obviously we're talking about it in terms of now because we still have the battery source in this circuit because we reset it. So here in this bit, they're in parallel because there's no voltage source there, but here they're now in series. So these two R1 and R2 are in series. And so we just need to basically do a basic voltage divider calculation and we can find out exactly v what voltage feminine is. So remember, voltage feminine is the voltage across A and B, right? And like I said, we're, we've got a, the voltage across A and B is equal to the voltage here and here because no current flows towards A and B. So we can find out V feminine. Keep this on screen. V feminine is going to be equal to Let's do. Let, I'm gonna let's. I'm gonna write the the voltage divider equation first. So you got E one, or in our case R one. Oh, sorry, V one. So V seven is equal to V one times R two, which is the resistor we want. This one here. R two over R one plus R two. Right, because we're we're saying that the voltage V seven a and b is equal to the same voltage that's across r2 so now we can do v feminine is equal to six volts which is our v1 times by r2 what's r2 six ohms divided by r1 plus r2 which is four plus six four plus six so then we can say that v feminine is equal to six times uh, 6 over 10, 6 over 10 is 0 0.6, 0 0.6 times 6, which is equal to 3.6 volts. The voltage feminine is equal to 3.6 volts. There you go. Okay, so now we've got voltage feminine, and we've also got um, R feminine, resistor feminine. So now, this will often be the final step. But in our instance, we'll carry on a little bit further, one step further. But we're going to draw the feminine circuit. And we're just going to turn that whole thing into our feminine circuit. A and B. Load. This is our feminine. Voltage feminine. So this is exactly what we've got up here. I could have just copied and pasted it. What we've got here, right? Okay, so now we're just going to put in our values and we're done. So, voltage feminine is 3.6 volts, 
R Thevenin is what? 2.4 volts. Sorry, 2.4 ohms. And then we've just got our resistor there of 6 ohms. Okay, and that is our volt uh, sorry, our Thevenin circuit. So what we've said now is that this whole circuit here is equivalent to this as it relates to terminals A and B. So the final step for us, which, you know, sometimes I th I don't, I'm not sure in my exam if I just had to do just up to here or not, but you can continue by basically saying that step six would be to find the voltage across the load. So now whatever, if this load changes, if it make that load a variable resistor and change it to eight ohms, change it to 10 ohms, if we was trying to work that out using this, it'd be long every single time. But now you can, now you're going to see it's super easy to find the voltage across this load. Why? Because it's, again, just a basic voltage divider. Think about it. You've got electrons coming out of here, right? And then they're going through here. They're going back through here. And going back around here. So, you know, in terms of voltage, the voltage coming out is just split across here and across here. Just the basic voltage divider. So if these two... If, for example, these two 2.4 ohms, and that was 2.4 ohms, then it'd just be split in half. Okay, so let's find it for, let's draw our v and circuit again, because I kind of messed that one, other one up. Voltage. A, B. That's the thing, it's so easy to draw. All right, so we've got six ohms for the load, and we've got 2.4 ohms for the R feminine and we've got 3.6 volts for V feminine. Okay. The voltage divider in this instance, we're looking for the voltage across our load. So V L right. The voltage across the load is equal to voltage feminine, the input voltage multiplied by the resistor we're looking for, uh, or the one we're going over. So R L. So R L divided by R feminine, which is this resistor here, plus RL. So VL is equal to V feminine, which is 3.6 volts, times RL, which is 6 ohms, divided by 6 ohms plus 2.4 ohms, which is 8.4 ohms. And then we've got VL is equal to 3.6 times What's 6 divided by 8.4? 6 divided by 8.4 gives you 0 0.71. So VL is equal to 3.6 times 0 0.71. And that gives you 2.556 or 2.5, yeah. So you got volt, voltage across this load here is equal to 2.56 volts and there you go finish now now you know and you can do the same thing for current it's just v equals ir and yeah so that's it we're finished with our feminine's analysis of feminine's theorem one thing i just want to touch on for those that if you did if you did finish first year and you're just revising then one thing to keep in mind is that you still have you know those equations to convert to Norton. If you haven't uh, done this already, don't worry about it. You can just end the video here. Um, this might, this is probably just going to confuse you. But if you have done Norton's theorem already, then you just remember that you have those simple equations that you can memorize to make your life a bit easier. So I'll just touch on. Um, let's just type Norton's equations. What you can do as well is if you have, if you haven't done this, go and watch the next video, which I haven't recorded yet, but hopefully. When you're watching, by the time you're watching this, I would have. Then you can come back and look at these equations. Or if I remember, I'll stick these equations in the Norton video as well. So you've got the current for the load, right? And that's equal to, if you wanted to find the current for the load, and that's equal to the Norton current times by the R Norton. And remember, R Norton and B Norton, uh, R Norton and R Fevenin are the same, remember? Then Rn plus Rl. That's how you find the current nice and easy for load. If you wanted to find the Norton current, then you can also just do V feminine divided by R feminine. So in this instance here, that would be super easy for us to do, for us to find the Norton current, V feminine divided by R feminine. 
And if you wanted to find Vive Heaven in, which is what we've just done, and you've already done Norton's, then you can just do I Norton times R Norton. And obviously that's basic because that's just V equals I R. So you might, if you know this, this is super basic stuff. But if you haven't done it, don't worry about it. And yeah, that's it guys. Thanks for watching. And we shall do our last video. Although I might touch on capacitors and stuff. I don't know. Maybe I don't really have time. So what I might do is might just call it wraps uh, on the next video after we, we've done um, Norton's. And then I can leave the capacitor stuff for next year. Cool. Alright guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.